Show on WWDB Talk 860. Stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne. I'm Barry Reisman, and here's Jack. How you doing, Jack? Great, Barry. Great. Just a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Um, and from talking to all my friends, everyone uh, survived. <laughs> well, actually, this week's show is going to extend on that just a little bit more because uh, – I, I think what brought it to mind is my neighbor, who's always fall, who has already fallen off his roof once. Oh, I gave gee. him some basic tips, and boy, he was just fully extended all the way to the left. I said, "Oh my goodness, I think I better do a show on 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 how to safely uh, put up your Christmas lights and decorations, and and how not to get hurt uh, right before one of the biggest holidays of the year." But before we kick in, I'd like to thank my sponsors, because, again, without them, I wouldn't be on the air. So, Buxmont Inspections, uh, Rob Bowie. Although it's winter, when was the last time that you really had your on-site sewage system evaluated? If you can't remember, give, give Rob a call at 215-669-4213. Burrow Exterminating. Uh, Rob was on the show a couple weeks ago. And listen, folks, even though the weather's cold, that doesn't mean that the... These little bugs are not coming inside your home. So 610-586-5640. Pest Blaster, if you're hearing that scratchiness over uh, your head in your bedroom, you might have a critter. This is their time to come and get warm. So 215-295-5555. Brainflushgear.com. Um, I got a nice email from a client who had spoken to Kevin Zolna. And uh, he he put together something nice for his family. So it's nice to see that. Uh, just as that simple, brainflushgear.com, or their email is contact at brainflushgear.com. And, of course, my company, Tri-County Inspection Company. I've uh, been in business uh, since 1985. I can't do the math, Barry, but it sounds like almost 30 years. Yeah. Um, we're at 215-295-2030. We're in 13 counties. You can also look us up at our website at tcinspect.com. We could be in your neighborhood tomorrow. So, uh, again, folks, um, any of these sponsors that help me with this show, I ask you to, to reach out to them. They are qualified. They're, they're people-oriented, and they will help you through any crisis uh, or scenario that you might find. So... Uh, visiting the email box, Sam, from the great Northeast. Um, I listened to your show on the uh, WWDB podcast for the revisit of emails. I'm going to forward you some questions about these newer fireplaces that look too small to burn anything but paper logs. Can we have another show where you answer questions? Sam, it's a great point. Next week, I'm going to dive deep into the email box and answer your questions as well as a couple other listeners' questions. So uh, please email me at the House Whisper Show at gmail.com. And for previous episodes, you know, you can always visit the website at thehousewhisperershow.com. So let's dive right in. Today's topic, how to safely prepare for the holidays. First off, let's talk about holiday lighting. And when I think of that, I think of ladders. And, you know, I think one of the first things about a ladder is never go up to the top rung of a ladder. You always want to be able to brace your knees or your body against the girth of the rails and the step above. So when you're on a six-foot step ladder, that doesn't mean that you're going up and, and standing on that top platform because the little tray that's supposed to hold some trinkets or your gallon of paint will not support body weight. Uh, if you uh, fall to one side or the other. And believe me, the higher you go, the riskier uh, your ladder becomes. So if you have an extension ladder fully extended, um, I want you to use your arms and, and brace your feet at the base of the ladder, okay, so that when, when you have and you're holding this ladder out, you want to fully extend your arms, and then put the feet back uh, of the ladder against your own feet. What that does is that will set up the appropriate angle for your ladder so that you can safely ascend it. Um, if, if your angle is too sharp, in other words, you're almost going vertically, it's not safe because as you ascend a ladder, 
the weight of your own body will want to push that ladder away from what you're putting your ladder against. So if you're approaching your gutter to put up lights, too sharp of an angle can make you fall back. I think of that John Belushi uh, uh, portion in Animal House where uh, he was doing other things that he shouldn't be, but uh, as he was ascending the ladder, he got to the top, he fell backwards. Of course, that's why they call it the movies. But at the same time, if you have too much of a, of a rake or an angle on your, on your ladder, the bottom of the ladder can kick out. So you have to find this happy medium. And you want to make sure that it's, it's, it's at a safe angle. I, and this is the advice I gave my, na- my neighbor. Strap the ladder to a gutter spike, a hidden hanger, a railing, something that will keep the ladder in place. Uh, years ago, um, I was building a home in Huntington Valley, and I went up on the ladder uh, to check my, my roofer's work, and a gust of wind came by and it blew the ladder down. Oh, gee. You have with you in it, on it? I was on the roof. Uh, oh, you were on the roof? Oh, well. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, Barry, there was no one else around. Oh, gee whiz. Now, I'm about do? 100 feet off the main road, which where I built was on Byberry Road. And if, you, if anyone's familiar with that road, everyone whisks by between probably 30 to 50 miles an hour. Right. Nobody stops there. No one stops. So for me to holler to, to, to stop a car would have, was ridiculous. Uh, fortunately, my neighbor heard me and was able to write in the ladder uh, so I could get back down. Now, my roofer did a great job. But one thing I learned from that little uh, escapade is to always strap your ladder because once you step off, you want to make sure that it's there when you come back. But that's the other point. If it's windy, I I would suggest you stay on the ground, okay? Uh, The one thing you don't want to do is is if if the wind catches your ladder, it's going to blow it over. Now, fortunately with me, I was at a new construction site, so it didn't matter. But, again, the higher you go, the further the ladder is extended, and it could break a window. Um, it could uh, fall on a child. It could hit your car. Uh, it could do a lot of damage. So you have to be extremely careful if it's a windy day. Um, my other suggestion is keep only one rung, and that's the horizontal portion of the ladder, above the gutter. Um, and why is that? Because if you go up too many rungs, it's actually difficult to move your body around the frame of the ladder to descend. Okay, now I said a lot of words there, but if, if you're a ladder and a roof walker like me, you have to make sure that as you're ready to come off the ladder, that if you have too much height above the a gutter edge, it's harder for you to turn your body around it. So sometimes it's easier to actually bend down, put a knee on the roof, and then twist and, and put your foot to the center point of the rung, not on one particular edge or the other. Go right to the center, and please, you want to descend below the gutter edge. In other words, when you're putting your foot on the rung, don't have it even with the, with the, um, the gutter. You want to go one below it because one above, believe it or not, um, uh, you're, you're not balanced. And if the ladder's not balanced, you're gonna, you could slide one way or the other. So, and keep in mind any ladders, a three-foot ladder, a six-foot ladder, an eight-foot A-frame ladder. Um, every ladder, you really have to be careful. And just a couple stories that are, that are real. A friend of mine who's a home inspector in and around the Harrisburg area broke his leg in two places coming out of an attic. Now, he descended down a six-foot A-frame ladder or a step ladder, and basically the bottom of the ladder slipped out. So evidently he was on a hardwood floor, and his leg got caught up between the rungs. Uh, so, um, you know, he was out of commission for about six months. Um, another, uh, you know, an in-law of mine uh, dislocated his shoulder when he stepped off the wrong side of a three-foot step ladder. So, you know, he thought he was going up one side and could come down the other. Well, the ladder kicked out, and uh, he landed on his shoulder and, and dislocated that. So he's okay, but, um, you, you know, even a three-foot step ladder, you can get hurt. 
Again, my neighbor fell off uh, uh, his roof. He was about nine feet off the ground. Uh, and what happened was exactly what I spoke about earlier. He put his foot too high on the rung above the gutter edge. So, uh, and, and Scott's a big boy. He's about 6'5", but he still fell nine feet. And so when I saw him on the, on the roof again this past weekend, uh, this is why I wanted to do something on ladder safety. And we did talk about that. He goes, Jack, you know, give me the weebie jeebies going up on the roof again. I said, well, once you fall, Scott, you know, uh, you have to really think about it. And he told me that when he was younger, he was a, a volunteer fireman. So he spent a lot of time on ladders. But until you have a, an, a, an accident, and that's why they call them accidents, you really begin to fully realize um, it doesn't take much to be off the ground to get hurt. So always respect your ladder and use them carefully. I'll tell you what, we have to take a little break, but I have to tell you, I have, I have this uh, image of you, Jack. I have you, this image of you up on the roof uh, working and the ladder falling down. Uh, did you say anything like, oh, sugar, when it happened? Oh, quite a few good words, uh, Barry. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, no one could hear me. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's, it's a good lesson to, to attach that ladder. It, you know, it's a good thing somebody came along or you'd still be up there. Uh, but I'm glad you're here with us at WWDB. I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more information and more tips about safety around the holidays, around the home with Jack Milne, the House Whisperer. We'll be right back after this. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-586. 5640 or send an email request to boroughinspects at verizon.net. That's 610 586 5640 or email at boroughinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t shirts by brainplushgear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. Brainflushgear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own Brain Flush. Visit Brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at Brainflushgear.com. For your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-66. 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. 
Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. And welcome back. Uh, Jack Milne is here, the house whisperer, every week at this time at WWDB. And uh, Jack is giving, is giving us some very important tips. I am paying very close attention about safety around the home, around the holidays. And uh, Jack, uh, we, we, we can't wait to get more of your information. You're back on the air. Well, thank you, Barry. And, of course, you know, with me, my show is always about, um, you know, every house has a story. And, and with today's lessons, truly, I think the moral of anything that deals with heights, if you're afraid of them, uh, don't get on your roof. Uh, sometimes you can even hire professional uh, lighting experts to, you know, make your house glow. But, um, you know, if you have certain fears, uh, there's a reason that you have them. So please be careful. But let's move on to lighting. And I always think of that Chevy Chase movie, you know, Christmas Vacation, stapling lights to his roof and overloading his circuits. And you know what? There's a lot of truth to that. Uh, but one thing I always tell my clients is please don't staple your lights to your roof surface. Um, they call it the movies for a reason. Uh, but what I don't understand why is why Christmas lights only seem to last one season. And honestly, I think it's one of the biggest scams going. But at least today's lights are going towards the LEDs. So we're getting away from the incandescent bulb in a lot of different ways. It's also moved on to our Christmas lights. So maybe we'll be lucky and get another season from them. Um, I also tell clients that this is a good time to label your panel box if you haven't done it yet. And, it's a, and you want to find out what best circuits uh, will best serve your needs for your, for your lighting. But also the other reason is look how dark it's getting. And it's getting darker sooner, and it's lasting longer even in the morning. So um, it's always good to have a flashlight around at this time of year because uh, if you're going to blow your circuits, you want to make sure you can make your way to the panel box. And then, of course, we have ground fault protection. Our technical term is GFCIs, which stands for ground fault circuit interrupter. And although we're used to seeing them in our kitchens and our bathrooms and exteriors, you know, during wet weather, keep in mind that they may trip, and that's their job. And especially if you have 500 feet of Christmas lights or 20 spotlights, um, I know it may be frustrating for you to go out and reset that small uh, receptacle, but it's better uh, than uh, electrical shock or even potentially a fire. So if you don't have ground fault protection that serves your garage or exterior, it's easy enough to have an electrician go ahead and put one in. And remember that all those plugs that you, you know, have to use to extend uh, your, your lighting um, are going to sit in weird spaces like metal, like your gutter, or it could be resting comfortably in a puddle. So any of these wet areas you want to make sure are properly protected. It could save your life. So if you don't have GFCIs, it's never too late to, to add them. But also don't forget to test them. And I tell my clients in my reports to test them monthly because as a professional inspector, I can tell you on a given day, I usually find at least one, or one to two homes where the GFCIs don't work. And if they don't work, then they don't trip. And if they don't trip, it, it, could, it could be a life safety issue. Uh, so don't take that one lightly. Don't overload your circuits. Try to spread your circuits out, and your house will be a glow. Other tidbits. Uh, when you're hanging your lights on your gutters, give, them, give the gutters a final cleaning. Why? Because the gutters are dry and, and 
the and the and the debris in the gutters are dry. So you don't want to start an electrical fire with your plug sitting in dry leaves. So if you're up there, clean out your gutters. Don't forget to turn off your hose bibs. Those are your water spigots. And 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 not only drain them back, but also disconnect, store your hoses after you drain them. So it's not enough just to shut them off outside the wall. You want to go inside your home to find the shut-off valve, borrow your bride's coffee pot, go downstairs, drain them back, and don't forget to take the hose off the hose bib, drain the hose, and then store it for the winter. Clean and clear your dryer vent, okay? Cold weather means that more clothes are being used, and your washer and dryer are working over time. And, uh, folks, I do my dryer the day after Thanksgiving because that's a day that uh, I've always kind of ingrained in my brain to take care of this small task. And, you know, this, the more kids you have, the more the dryer is going to operate, and especially a gas dryer. 19,000 dryer fires last year across the country. So, you know, don't take that little task lately. If you have a shop vac, blow it out. I use actually my leaf blower. And I'll tell you what, it looks like gray snow by the time I'm done with it. But uh, don't forget to do that. Um, here's a good one. Don't use rock salt on concrete because the, the calcium in the, in the rock salt will eat away at the calcium in your concrete. So that's why if you have a, a concrete walk with all kinds of little pock marks in it, well, that's because you've been using rock salt. Um, you can use the rock salt on your driveway. Be it being that it's asphalt, okay? But uh, one thing that really works well is kitty litter. And I usually find it's cheaper. You know, so you can buy a 100-pound bag of kitty litter for about the same price as uh, 20 pounds of rock salt. Um, it also works under your tires. And I think you may have seen that commercial uh, with the insurance company that gives you ideas. So, and you can also use the weight of the kitty litter in your trunk of your car because... Uh, one, it adds a little bit more weight. You know, our cars are getting lighter and lighter. But two, you know, if you come across that snowstorm and you're out there on your own, um, you can use the kitty litter uh, to help get you home, believe it or not. So uh, for vehicles, I would ask that you check your tire pressure because, as you know, the colder it gets, the air pressure drops in, in your car tires. Uh, so you don't want to run uh, November, December, January, and February on, on underinflated tires. One, it beats up your tires a lot faster, and two, you get less gas mileage. Also, check your antifreeze. It's one of those things we see the commercials, but when was the last time you ever looked in there? And now they make it simple. They give you a reservoir bottle. So make sure your car is nice and warm. Open up the reservoir bottle, not the radiator, but the reservoir bottle, and check your levels and see if you have to add any more. And today's antifreeze is usually a 50-50 mixed with water. Windshield washer fluid. When was the last time you checked that? Uh, again, it's getting darker earlier. People tend to be a little bit more stupid out there. I don't know why, but it, it's just uh, unbelievable. So you want to make sure that around the holidays that you uh, put your windshield washer fluid in, that you keep a nice, clear windshield. And getting back to that former point, Put your car lights on at dusk. I can't tell you how many people I see driving without their lights on. Uh, and it's dark. You know, so I flash them, and they probably think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ignorant or something because I'm flashing my high beams, but I'm just trying to tell them to make sure they put their lights on. And the other thing I ask is slow down when driving. The pre-holiday mayhem in and around the stores, it's like everyone is out for themselves. So, you know, a little bit of extra care uh, should be taken. And ladies, when you're out there doing the shopping, carry your car keys in your hand. As soon as you leave the store, your hands are going to be in your purse anyway, you know, getting out your wallet and taking care of the necessaries. But grab your keys at the same time and keep them in your pocket. Put your wallet back deep in your purse, please. And then as you walk out to the car, keep your fingers on the button because most cars today with a key fob do have a panic button and never be afraid to use it. And the other time you can use it is if you're in that big mall shopping center somewhere and you forget where your, where your car is. I know my mother-in-law pushes the panic button quite a few times. Keep some of these little things in mind because, you know, at this time of year, you know, when we think of peace on earth and goodwill towards men, I think sometimes it's really the furthest from the truth. 
And now instead of Black Friday, we have a new term called Antithesis Thursday. And it's a lot of THs, but in my mind it means that, you know, on Thanksgiving Day, all of a sudden now all the stores are open to try to help their bottom dollar, but at the same time taking us away from our family. So, um, you know, I, I just think it's wrong, but anyway. So, you know, in closing, I'm going to ask that, one, be careful. Two, be safe. Three, think before you act because that goes a long way. Open the door. Be courteous. Uh, d don't go tackle someone because it's the last CD on the shelf. Um, remember, it'll be found somewhere else and real close by. But I ask that you enjoy the holidays because they only come once a year. And, and don't get caught on them too much because truly, again, our, this is the time of peace. And it's the time of goodwill. And... Um, and, and I try to, to emphasize that to everyone I meet. And, uh, and, and it's not a lot, but, but you get a thank you at the end of the day. And, and to me, uh, that's better than any present under the tree. So um, I ask that this holiday season, sit back and relax. Um, have a good meal. Um, don't worry about the presents under your tree. Be more concerned about the presents at your table. And I think that's that's honestly one of the best gifts uh, that you can ever have. Well, on that happy note, we are out of time, Jack. Well, um, Barry, you know, um, next week, uh, I just want to let you know that I'm going to dive it back into the email box. Listen in, uh, because, again, it talks about um, things around the holidays that, again, we take for granted. But these are your letters to me that I'm happy to respond to. So, as I always like to close... Please spend time with friends and family. And once again, have a great holiday. And tune in again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. Now you can listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. This is Barry Reisman on WWDB Talk 860. Thanks so much for listening. La, 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 la.